So just checking in a week postpartum. That sofa is my life now. This is literally what, this is where I've been for the whole entire week. One of the most simplest things that you could ever do, I just couldn't do. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. In the last video, I mentioned that I wanted to do a whole video dedicated on that very first week after giving birth. So that very first week of newborn life. But most importantly, everything to do with postpartum life as well, because I feel like when it comes to obviously having a baby there is so much research now of course it all begins with how to conceive pregnancy and obviously birth there is so much information out there to try and digest because obviously not one birth not one pregnancy not one baby is the same when it came to researching postpartum from my experience my personal own experience i definitely was not prepared enough for one the the type of labor and delivery that i had and two exactly what to expect afterwards i had no idea to what extent recovery meant for me felt like talking about this was just as important as talking about what to expect obviously first week of taking care of your little one and everything that comes along with it obviously as you know everything happens at the same time if i was to deal with the sleep deprivation separately or the breastfeeding separately or you know the recovery separately both mentally and physically then i feel like i would i would be able to you know take it all on but that's not how it works it all happens at the same time so of course it can definitely be a bit overwhelming and you're just sort of like trying to get through each day as it comes but yeah so that's what i'm going to do in today's video just talk about exactly what happened both myself and my little girl and yeah everything that happened in our very first week post birth so for those of you that have not watched my birth story video just a quick overview i ended up having a forceps delivery so an assisted delivery following the epidural and amelia getting very distressed i then ended up with third degree tears a manual cut and also internal and external tears in the buttocks other problems that presented themselves was the fact that preeclampsia came up kidney problems came up my blood pressure definitely it came up multiple times i also had sepsis so i had all of these problems during labor and of course they followed me post birth so that's just a quick overview of exactly what happened yeah the biggest thing that was very apparent to me was the amount of pain that i was in of course i was still completely numb down below i could not feel absolutely anything so i still had a catheter in the next day they asked me if i could try and move my legs because they wanted to get me to a point where i could obviously go up and pee by myself however i could not move i could move if i grabbed my leg and moved it but in regards to moving it myself i just could not do it my legs were definitely way too heavy i still had absolutely no energy whatsoever i felt useless in a way just lying in the bed not being able to do anything i couldn't even get up to pick up my daughter in order to feed her i always had to rely on someone else in order to pass her to me straight away i just i just felt miserable because i couldn't move i couldn't do the simplest thing as you know feeding my baby and looking back why did i put so much pressure on myself you know you've just been through this traumatic experience you know you're you're lucky to be alive and you're you, you know you're expecting to walk at this point that's that's so silly but you know as you're in the moment you just don't think of any of those things you just automatically think you're going to bounce back straight away and you're going to be able to get up and walk straight away but 
that was definitely not the case in my experience. In regards to Amelia that day, honestly, we were both just trying to figure out the whole breastfeeding thing. But because obviously it was also day one, you did have a lot of help in regards to the midwives coming in because obviously they want to make sure you're latching properly. They just want to give you as much information as they can. Honestly, I just felt like it was an absolute godsend to the fact that they continually came in and just just looked over how we were doing and things like that. I think it got to the point where we were worried that she wasn't getting enough because I feel like she was already fussy on the breast, which is obviously understandable. At this point, you're still only giving out colostrum. They must have got worried because after obviously feeding her from both sides, they would then ask me to harvest colostrum in order to give it to her afterwards. I didn't feel like it was a setback. Obviously, I still was all very new to this experience, so I literally just went with whatever I was told. Just reading off my notes, we had continuous problems with jaundice. Amelia always, always, you know, got picked up with her jaundice and she would always like get tested every couple of hours but honestly everything came back just under the line so no one was really worried. So with this day I was finally, finally able to eat and drink something. I think for the very first day, all I was allowed was water. I practically ordered everything they offered, which is silly of me because I definitely did not eat everything. I just had a couple bites of each thing. I definitely did not have an appetite. With my mobility, I did have a bit more mobility on day two. I was still in like excruciating pain, definitely very achy down below. And I still had to sort of use my hands in order to move my legs. However, I was then able to finally lie on my side. Like, when it comes to sleeping, I'm a belly sleeper. But obviously, from the past nine months, I've not been able to do that. So, I've just been, like, used to sleeping on my side. So, for me to actually be able to just roll over and sleep on my side was an absolute miracle it just felt so good and although like i said i had no energy whatsoever and i still need to do, use my hands in order to move my legs i was able to actually stand up out of bed obviously with the assistance of midwives and phil holding me up as well and i was actually able to go for a wee yeah after a while i just could not pee i thought because I thought to myself, like, I know I need to pee because it stings down there. Although I can't feel anything, it stings, so I, I must need a wee. But I, it just wouldn't come. So I had to slowly make my way back to the room and just, yeah, I just, again, felt like a failure, you know? I just couldn't pee. One of the most simplest things that you could ever do, I just couldn't do. So I think I sat around for a little bit longer you know, had some more liquids. I tried my hardest to sit up in bed because obviously I'd been lying down for the majority of the past 24 and a bit more hours. And then again, when I finally thought, no, do you know what? I'm gonna go and try again. So I went again, I sat on the toilet for a bit. You know, when you do that thing where you like stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, walk around, still didn't work. So I ended up having to push my bladder and then eventually, I had a wee. It took a while to get there, but also, thankfully, because I was actually really numb down there and I couldn't feel a thing, there was no first wee sting. So I am very grateful for the fact that I was completely numb down there. And then with Amelia, again, she was continuing to get a bit of colostrum. I think I remember it was like 3 a.m. at the time and both the midwives were in and they said, okay, let's have some colostrum now. And all I remember is having this wave of like tiredness over me. Obviously at the time, Phil had obviously gone home and I just remember saying, I, I need to sleep. I have no energy. I think I started crying because I, I feel like everything was like slowly catching up onto me. And I just, I felt like I hit a brick wall. I, just, I was just like, you know, I'm really tired. I can't do this. So, you know, the midwife said, okay, let's just harvest some colostrum. 
and then we can feed it to her and she's like do you mind if i help you harvest colostrum because she knew that i was trying she knew i was struggling doing it on my own so she offered some help we both harvested colostrum and then they fed it to her and then obviously continuing out through the day they still had issues with her jaundice and although my mo my mobility had improved from the previous day it still was not it still wasn't great however in the morning they mentioned that i could potentially go home because my blood pressure was okay you know they were happy although they, there was still a lot of issues they were happy with where we were at at the time so you know they mentioned that we could go home and you know finally when phil came back the following day i sort of said to him like can we just wait it out a few hours i just want to just stay here a little bit longer because deep down i don't think i was ready i was definitely not ready to leave because i felt like i felt like i still had a lot like a lot more way to go however it came to about five o'clock i think and we eventually went home you know everyone came in did sort of like the discharge things of checking everything you know giving me a breakdown of exactly what medic like medication i needed but yeah like i said i was definitely excited to finally be going home so it is technically day two and we've just got home from the hospital what do i do now look how perfect she is i can't stop staring at her also, I think cluster feeding has started, so I'm hoping I'll get my milk in tomorrow or the next day. Fingers crossed. If anyone's wondering what the first week of newborn life is like, you're going to be doing is basically just this. This is literally what, this is where I've been for the whole entire week. I can't move because then she will wake up constantly wants to be held and i can't risk moving because she will wake up so this is a day that i felt normal because i was also able to have my very first shower i was absolutely petrified of having a shower and i don't know why because it's just water but i thought i can't use soap because if i use soap it's going to run down my body and it's going to somehow end up and make its way down there and it's going to hurt even though i'm completely still numb at this point and i can't feel a thing what i did was i did the most weirdest thing i washed my hair however i would wash it to the side so i'd be washing my hair over here and i'd move my body over here so no soap got you know run down my body and then when it came to like obviously using shower gel i would stick an arm out i would try and stick a leg out if i could or it was very weird i just tried to make sure that nothing was making its way down there because i was petrified yeah my very first shower was a very weird one i've got to say i've never done that in my whole entire life before but i managed a shower and that was a big enough achievement for me with amelia we definitely hit the cluster feeding stage on day three so she was feeding like wanting to feed pretty much every hour and still at this point it was still just colostrum my milk hadn't come in day three is also the very first appointment you have post birth when you leave the hospital and basically they just want to check how you're doing how you're healing how your recovery is and they wanted to check with Amelia as well. They check with your baby in regards to any issues. When it came to weighing Amelia, she was at a 12% weight loss. So they were very worried about her weight and they were also still worried about her jaundice as well. So, you know, she mentioned that she was gonna ring the hospital and just see if we can get in that night just for them to check her over. But I just thought, okay, we're being readmitted. So there must be something really, really wrong. And I just got really upset. And it was just, I felt like it was just one thing after the other, you know, I had a nice day. I managed to have a shower, managed to see my stepson. And now we're back into the hospital because, you know, things have gone wrong. And I thought, great, I'm yet again, being in the hospital on my own 
And I know obviously you're constantly around people, there's constantly midwives, but if there was one thing post birth that I was absolutely petrified of, it was being left alone. It was it was Phil having to go home and not being able to be there in order to support me. Yeah, all the tears were happening. We got through another night of the ex, you know, the feeding regime we were put on. You know, and I just felt a bit more confident in myself. You know, I thought, you know, we can do this. We've been put on a feeding plan. You know, she's happier in herself. We're both feeling more confident and more comfortable with the whole feeding aspect of things. And, you know, again, we were both being looked after. Again, very grateful. And then again with Amelia, of course, they did close monitoring on her jaundice and her feeding. Everyone was really happy and really confident. And because of that, we actually was able to get discharged from the hospital. I think we got discharged around 5pm. So we were there less than 24 hours. I do wish that they didn't discharge me in the first place because then we wouldn't have had to have come away and then come back. Like after we thought about it, Phil and I, we just thought, do you know what, this was the right thing to do because now we feel more confident. Um, so we were happy the fact that we got readmitted. So yeah, we then went home again. So day five came around and so again, day five, you are then expected to have another midwife appointment. So day three, day five, day 10 is when you go and see the midwife for obviously weight check-ins, check in how you are, how you're doing. And naturally I was on the edge of my seat bag of nerves, bag of anxiety in regards to going to this appointment because obviously day three appointment I was readmitted and so I just thought what if I'm readmitted again? What if we're in this backwards and forwards of needing to be readmitted because things are obviously not going the way we want? And yeah so for the whole entire day I was you know I was just a bag of nerves. However, this day, it was also the 20th of December. So of course it was five days before Christmas. The last thing you wanna do is spend all of that time in the hospital. So again, I was definitely worried. So because we were more confident in ourselves that day and we didn't have the day five appointment till, I think it was around two o'clock, we finally had our first family out in. Phil's mum came with us to sort of help. And we did the Christmas food shop. So we went to the appointment, weight was fine, jaundice still flagged up, but the again, just under the line, every time they check it was just under the line. With me physically, I was obviously still in a lot of pain. I was a little bit more mobile in regards to the fact that I could walk, but everything was still very sensitive and very numb, very irritable. And yeah, I felt like there was an improvement, but I still had a long way to go. So, you know, I was still dependent on the drugs. And yeah, so we went to the appointment. Her, her umbilical cord actually fell off during the appointment. So that meant we could then start to bathe her. Um, and she also had a hearing test which came back fine i just had a sense of relief i just thought oh my god we've finally been able to make it to an appointment and everything's come back okay you know everything's come back on track they're happy with the feeding plan they're happy with her weight they're happy with with myself and we can we can go home so when we got home you know we were finally able to relax Guys, two of the most exciting things happened at the end of day five. One, my milk came in. I cannot tell you how excited I was for my milk to finally come in, especially after being told that it may never come in. My milk came in and I was so excited because I felt like this is the most positive news I've had all week. My milk came in and the second most exciting yet gross thing to happen to me on day five i went for a poo uh, it hurt of course regardless of the fact that i was prescribed two types of laxatives just the joys of postpartum life of two of the most weirdest things to be excited over 
So day six, I was definitely still in a lot of pain, aching, everything still numb, medication still on the go. I still had a bit of um, mobility and the fact that I could walk places. Um, however, I found that if I were to sit in a certain position for too long or if I were to walk for too long or if I were to lie down for too long, then it would start to really, really ache. So I felt like I had to just constantly keep switching it up a little bit, have a bit of a balance. And it sort of worked that way. I just felt like, oh, as soon as I got uncomfortable, I would, you know, just change positions and things like that. But on day six is when I started to feel a bit emotional. I feel like my emotions in the first week was sort of like up and down. Um, but I, I, I started to feel really emotional this day and it's because I was worried about Phil going back to work because I thought he has been a rock to me over these past six days. How the heck am I gonna cope without him here? You know, at this point, I still needed to rely on someone in order to pass her to me because I still couldn't pick her up, you know? I still couldn't move as much. I couldn't pick her up and then try and get up at the same time, you know? So I had to be sat comfortable. You know, Phil would have to pass her to me. You know, I still couldn't do things for myself. So I, yeah, I, it definitely got to the point where I was starting to get anxious. I would, you know, randomly just cry because I was absolutely petrified of him going back to work. Hello. So, you know, that was, <laughs> that was not, that was not a great day. And then with Amelia, because obviously my milk had come in the day before, we were cluster feeding. So I think she was feeding, let me just look at my notes every honestly every it felt like every half an hour but it was every half an hour to an hour um that she was feeding and yeah so i basically just got in this routine i was constantly sat on the sofa honestly i feel like i live on that sofa because it's just a, a montage of me feeding and burping and soothing and eating and you know doing all the things and sleeping and that sofa is my life now honestly this is where i live a hundred percent of the time <laughs> so just checking in a week postpartum just to show you how everything is looking so far so i think i took a picture like three days postpartum so if i did i'll insert it here but this is what my belly is currently looking like it's slowly going down it doesn't feel as firm but it's not exactly jelly either if that makes sense so yeah there's just a little update and then just to show you an even cuter one week update she's actually quite awake at the moment she's um had me up since 4 a.m how dare she but yeah i cannot believe she is a week old she's just the absolute cutest but day seven i actually felt i felt better on myself i felt a lot happier you know feeding was going great although i didn't feel 100 percent in myself i definitely felt more human you know i was able to see my mum and dad and day seven i was actually able to see my brother and his fiance so it was actually quite nice you know just starting to enjoy the newborn the newborn life you know of people coming around and seeing her and just talking to people about what we went through because it's quite nice to talk about these things and then day seven i still couldn't feel anything however some things were wearing away like i could start to feel when i needed to go for a wee and i felt like at this point the aching was slowly starting to wear off um, so I could start to feel a bit more of the pain. So like the numbness was starting to wear off. Of course, I still had aching. In, in regards to Amelia, we were still cluster feeding, but instead of every half an hour to an hour, it was every hour to an hour and a half. So I felt like we were definitely coming out of the cluster feeding stage. And so, yeah, that's pretty much the week in a nutshell. Um, I'm pretty sure I've missed out a hell of a lot of details. I definitely think there were times where I felt like I couldn't do this. I felt like a complete failure, especially when it came to needing to be readmitted. Um, but then there was definitely a week full of wins. Although I didn't feel 
100% in myself mentally and physically I definitely improved and I felt like things were definitely getting better I need to go and feed her now so I feel like that's a perfect ender to this video yeah I, I really hope you enjoyed this video and just an insight into the first week of course when it comes to postpartum and recovery it's not just a day thing just an insight month postpartum I, I still have a, a bit to go you know I I I do have full mobility, you know, however, I can't walk longer than a certain time before things start to ache and hurt. However, I am now completely off medication and, you know, feeding's a lot better. But yeah, so that very first week was definitely overwhelming. If you have any questions, please do comment them down below. Yeah, I will see you in my next video.